Well, the hits keep coming, and today we've got a solution to those kind of like noodly decoherent character movements that we often see in AI video. I've also got a look at some like VFX in painting. This one's really cool. Plus, I put on my detective's hat and I've got some yeah, insider scoops on the future of the AI video landscape. A few more interesting quick hits that you're not going to want to miss and a look at a pretty interesting AI generated storytelling platform. Kicking off, you know, the whole like noodle bone Play-Doh character movement has definitely been an issue that has plagued AI video from the start. Things have gotten a lot better, but still, we run into all kinds of bizarre outputs, even with the most modern of video generators. To that, Meta have introduced a solution to this problem with Video Jam, joint appearance motion representations for enhanced motion generation in video models. So really, it's Video Jam Ram Jvum, but hey, I mean, Video Jam does roll off the tongue a lot easier. So the way this works, according to Hilla Chafer, who worked on the project, is that uh, at training, essentially, it's broken down into two streams. In the first part, the model is forced to capture both visuals and dynamics, which of course would improve the motion understanding. And in the second part, and I guess this is like the special sauce here, is that they introduced inner guidance, which basically steers that initial video into essentially more coherent and realistic motion. And the results do look very good. I mean, much more coherent than many other models, which we will take a look at in just a minute. Here we have a shot of two adorable AI generated otters kind of playing around with each other. Uh, they are not fusing together and turning into some kind of abomination out of John Carpenter's The Thing. This woman on an aerial hoop also looks really great. Uh, granted, the motion is a little bit slower here, uh, but the model is, despite the fact that she's in silhouette, is clearly understanding you know, the relational difference between her and the hoop. Showcasing some creativity, we have this shot of a turtle on a skateboard, but really what it's revealing is how that turtle beat that hair in that race. But yeah, overall motion and movement are looking really good. Uh, take, for example, this jogger here. Uh, granted, it is a shorter clip, but I think that one thing that I've definitely noticed in a lot of the recent video models is that sort of stutter step that ends up happening in walk cycles. Uh, I'm, hopefully, it looks like Video Jam may have overcome that. Now, if you're not overly thrilled with the aesthetic output of these examples, uh, to note that this is a model that they trained themselves, but Video Jam can be applied to any other video model as well. As far as comparisons to current video models, uh, we have examples here from Gen 3, Sora, Kling 1.5. Uh, this is their baseline train model and then their baseline train model with Video Jam. Uh, cherry picked, eh, maybe. I mean, except for the Sora examples. Uh, and to note, Kling 1.5 is actually the older model. They are up to 1.6 now. That said, this Kling output, I mean, that is pure AI generated surrealist art. I mean, that belongs in a museum. But I do feel like they're being relatively fair here, like this woman engaging in a challenging workout routine. Uh, you know, the sore output looks pretty solid. She's not doing a lot of movement there, but I mean, seriously, have you ever tried to hold yourself like that? I mean, that's hard. Another good set here with this man exercising with battle ropes at a gym. Uh, our first example is, of course, Gen 3. Everybody always complains about Gen 3's motion being really slow. Apparently, it can get pretty fast. Uh, our second output is the Sora example, and that one actually has, in my opinion, uh, the best aesthetics out of the set. Um, the Kling version um, showcases a guy that, uh, depending on what sounds he's making, he may or may not get kicked out of the gym. And then in the Video Jam example, I think we've definitely got the best movement here. Although, again, you know, just due to the fact that the, their own training model, it just kind of looks a little bit on the bland side to me. But again, that echoes back to the fact that Video Jam can be incorporated into any other video model. So of course that leads to the question, like is there code for it? Can we play with it? Uh, currently not, it is just a research paper, but I can tell you after you know covering this stuff for the last two and a half years, when we see a paper like this, it means that the research is out there. There are probably multiple people working on similar projects. So although we may not see Video Jam itself, we will definitely see a version of it incorporated Operated into a video model very soon. That said, as a quick message to Zuck, if he happens to run across this video or is a fan, just ship it, ship it. Why not? You're meta, just ship it. Sliding over to some more emerging technology, we have Dyn VFX, Din VFX, Dyn VFX, I'm not sure, uh, augmenting real-time videos with dynamic content. This one is a little bit weird as there is only a video demo of it that I have been able to track down, no paper or 
uh, other information. So I'll definitely be keeping an eye on this one, but it is super cool. Here, check this out. So here we have real footage of uh, a guy driving down some city streets, the prompt being, you know, at a massive tsunami. And yeah, we now have a massive tsunami. I, I definitely see this as kind of like VFX video in painting. Um, again, here's another one of, uh, you know, a couple with a box, no head inside there. Uh, instead, a puppy um, is prompted and we get this. We have some people running in, I guess, a state park somewhere. Uh, prompt being at a golden retriever. And yeah, I guess that little puppy in a box is now grown up. Um, we'll take a deeper look at all of these outputs in just one second. Uh, this was, was one of my favorites, uh, you know, two snorkelers prompt being add a whale. So I do want to say I don't have a ton of information about this project yet. Uh, and again, I am really super impressed with it. But you know, as I started to scroll through sort of frame by frame, we do see like in the tsunami, for example, like we've definitely got like this like wipe line right there. Now, I don't know, again, since we don't actually have much information on this, I don't know if that is a wipe that's being done for the video or if this is how the model works. That said, I don't want to take anything away from what we're seeing with Dynafx because it is really impressive. Uh, there does seem to be some level of like world understanding or at least edge detection going on here, considering that as our wave comes up here, it actually reacts to the taxi cab over here, at least I presume it's a taxi cab. Uh, yeah, so that's pretty cool. Again, I do wish that I had more information about this for you, but you know, in the meantime, I will be keeping an eye out and we will definitely follow up on this once we do have more information. Headed over to the land of Mid Journey. Uh, this week's office hours actually had some pretty interesting AI video news uh, as reported by international man of mystery, Balawa Sadu. In the office hours, Mid Journey CEO David Holtz apparently said VO2 is not the upper bound for video quality this year. It's the lower bound that does actually track with some rumors that I have been hearing as well, namely in that we will be seeing a pretty big jump up within the next two months, likely probably starting with the Chinese models. Meanwhile, Mid Journey has been talking about their own video model, but they do seem to be shying away from it in recent weeks. They've now been talking about partnering with at least two other video platforms uh, to provide video output that they would then sort of uh, sprinkle their Mid Journey sauce on before it hits the table. I have been in detective mode to figure out who who this might be, but lips have been pretty sealed. Uh, I can tell you, at least according to my sources, that you can take Kling and Minimax off the table as there are no discussions going on, at least right now. I'll keep digging in on this, but interestingly on the VO2 front, I know a lot of you have been anxious for a full release and we might be getting there, at least via the API route. Noted by some keen eyes, VO2 has been spotted in the pulldowns of both FreePick and Catalyst, uh, labeled as coming soon. Now, according to Mr. Z, not Mr. X, Mr. X is our ByteDance guy, uh, Mr. Z tells me that uh, it's probably more like coming later than coming soon. But regardless, this is very good news for those of you who have been excited to try out VO2 as it, it does not look like it will suffer the same fate as VO1. Uh, we will eventually see it. Meanwhile, I have been exploring free pick more and more, and I do have a detailed review of them coming up pretty soon. Briefly checking in on our ongoing project, the website that I've been building with our friends at Hostinger. To be fair, progress has been a little slow on this, but I will say that, you know, most of the strides that I have made recently are because of Hostinger's AI tools. In the meantime, if you've been thinking about putting together a website to showcase your creative work or business ideas, uh, Hostinger does have my recommendation. In fact, actually, I just noticed that it'll automatically convert anything that you're working on into a mobile site as well. So if you head over to hostinger.com backslash theoretically, uh, and then you're gonna wanna scroll scroll down to the business website builder. Uh, it's only a dollar more than the premium website builder, but I do highly recommend it as that gets you access to all of the AI tools. And again, at $3.49 for a 48 month plan with a 75% discount, uh, I mean, it's kind of a no brainer. Uh, additionally, if you use my coupon code, theoretically uh, hit apply, you get an additional 10% off of that. Once you're up and running, Hostinger makes things really easy for you, including like domain name registration. To get started with your website, just come over to websites. Started with a brand new site, all you have to do is hit add website. 
So you'll have three options to build your website. Uh, you can either choose WordPress, the hosting your website builder, or just use you know old school HTML, PHP. Uh, we're gonna choose the hosting your website builder because I, I mean, I think it's really cool. From here, you basically can prompt out your website. Um, so we're gonna actually just create uh, Tim's AI image gallery here. Uh, and then for our description, a gallery of AI generated images by visual artist Tim from Theoretically Media showcasing amazing visuals from latent space. It's a gallery, we gotta class it up a little. From here, things are pretty easy. We can choose uh, from different color palettes if we want to for our website. I do like that first one. Uh, we'll hit continue. And from here, we can begin editing our website. Uh, so for example, changing this image out to, let's just use this one. We can, of course, switch out links to any of our like social feeds. Um, you know, we can play around with uh, this button, the discover button, rename it to whatever we want, uh, have it point to wherever we want it to go. And we can generate images right on platform as well. So uh, let's just switch this out to a city scrape with skyscraper, see what we get. And there you go, brand new image. And you know what, I don't even need to change the header of this page considering that it is an AI image gallery. We do of course have a number of other AI tools, not just the image generator, but an AI writer, a page generator, a section generator, blog generator, uh, a heat map, an SEO uh, assistant, and a logo maker. Let's try out the AI writer here. So I'm gonna give it a text description. And in just a few moments, I now have a new bio. It's a completely made up bio, but it is brand new bio. We can then copy that text, create a new section with AI. Uh, let's go with a biography section here. And now we have an entirely new section in the about section containing that, uh, you know, fake biography. Uh, and of course, if you want to move the sections around, you just, move, you know, hit the up button. Um, there we go. What's even better is if we wanted to set up like an online store component to this, maybe selling prints of these AI generated images. Uh, yeah, it's very easy to one click in an online store and you can do so with no additional transaction fees. So if you've been thinking about putting together a website for your business or, you know, again, for your AI generated images or films, uh, swing on over to hostinger.com backslash theoretically. And don't forget to use the coupon code theoretically for an additional 10% off. Uh, hey, my thanks to Hostinger for sponsoring today's video. And again, we will swing back uh, as the theoreticallymedia.com website gets closer to completion. Moving on, a quick update on OmniHuman, which we took a look at in the last video. This was uh, bike dances, kind of like talking avatar, um, lip sync model. There was definitely a lot of buzz and excitement about the model. And I, I, don't know, I hate to be the guy that pops the balloon, but uh, according to Zhen Wen Zhang, a researcher, over there um he says quote we do not we currently do not plan to release the model but may offer access through reviewed services to prevent misuse i did say in that video where i covered it that it's bite dance it had a 50 50 chance it just apparently landed on tails another quick hit here from topaz labs uh, they have announced project starlight their sort of next gen video upscaler slash restore uh i mean this this looks pretty crazy good um yeah topaz is kind of king of the hill in my opinion when it comes to video upscaling and uh, ai video cleanup uh, now to note that this oh god this looks so good um to note that they like topaz just does straight uh video cleanup and upscaling it does not do anything on the creative side although i kind of feel like this is sort of bordering on creative upscaling it's not changing necessarily any of the details but uh it's definitely enhancing stuff uh using a diffusion model um yeah uh, really great. Uh, looking forward to checking this out. Moving on, you know, I don't cover the robots very often here, but this one really tickled my fancy. This is ASAP, uh, Aligning Simulation and Real World Physics for Learning Agile Human Whole Body Skills. ASAP. So what they did here was basically train a human video data set of you know various sports stars uh, via pose estimation and motion retargeting. They then brought all of that into essentially you know a simulator uh, and had uh, simulations run of that movement, uh, and then they kicked it out to an actual robot. In the data set, we have Christian Ronaldo. Uh, I do love the fact that they put them in the uniforms as well. Kobe Bryant, uh, absolute legend, of course, uh, rest in peace. Um, yeah, that's, I mean, that is a Kobe fade right there. And LeBron the King James, although I'm not exactly sure what uh, LeBron James move that is. So while I will say it looks really impressive in certain scenarios, like this leg stretch, actually, I mean, it looks like a legit leg stretch. 
stretch there. It does look a bit janky on like the dancing side. And look, I'm not judging it. It kind of dances a little bit like I do. Uh, there is a reason that I have guitars on the walls here is because guitar players don't need to dance. I mean, again, not judging, but looking at the bot here, that is definitely a bot that claps on the one. Never clap on the one, always clap on the two. ASAP is of course a research project between Carnegie Mellon University and NVIDIA. So I, I don't know if we're gonna ever see any kind of like commercial application from this. Although I would love to see a robot trained up on Mike Tyson in his prime, then set him in the ring with Logan Paul, see what happens then. Via The Guardian, O2 has released AI Granny, which is an AI chatbot that uh, targets uh, phone scammers. I mean, let's take a listen, it's brilliant. B-L-A-Y, play store. Dear, did you um, say pastry? I'm afraid I'm not quite on the right page. No, no, I'm, I'm talking about the Play Store application, Play Store, it's not pastry. Oh dear, I'm so sorry, I'm, I'm a bit muddled. Rounding out with a look at Lore Machine. Uh, they reached out to me as an AI platform that focuses on storytelling, and yeah, immediately I was pretty intrigued. You can, of course, upload your own document to Lore Machine, or they have Lorecaster where you can, uh, you know, kind of craft your own story here. Uh, you can choose uh, from a number of different genres, um, describe your lore. I gave it a prompt that was kind of along the lines of the thing that I always like to circle back to, uh, which is bring the punk back into cyberpunk, so kind of an 80s cyberpunk thing. Lore Machine will then build out a kind of like story treatment for you, uh, and then you can take it over to the visualizer. Now, to note, the visualizer you might kind of see as a little bit on the like LTX -y side. They are not focusing on video here. From here, you can visualize up your characters. Uh, I chose kind of a storyboard style for this. Uh, I just thought it kind of had a cool look, but you can change that out. We'll take a look at that in a second. Uh, you can also generate up your locations. When we move over to Storyscape view, uh, we essentially have our treatment along with all of our our visualization. So uh, I think that something like this makes for a great pitch document, but here's where things get pretty cool. So we can move into this kind of like storyboard view. Uh, again, this is kind of why I chose storyboard as our overall look uh, and generate up images for each one of our scenes. Uh, and then this is actually the super fun part is that there's a comic view up here that will then take all of our images and kind of piece them together sequentially as a comic book. Um, yeah, I mean, it's cool. You can, of course, edit all of the text. I, I will say that there isn't anything like speech balloons or anything like that yet. Uh, Lore Machine is definitely kind of in a work in progress phase right now. Um, and uh, to be honest, I think they just kind of stumbled across this functionality. I just think it's super cool. So I would say if this looks interesting to you, definitely head over and give it a shot. Look, I got to give them credit for not trying to like, cram video into here, but instead focusing in on, you know, crafting a story and then, you know, visualizing it. Look, I'm sure that the image models will probably, you know, improve and get better and they'll add more stuff in. But, you know, to me, I actually kind of like this look. And, you know, speaking to the team, I know that they are very keen on getting feedback. So uh, any suggestions you have, please leave them below. In the meantime, I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.